Hello friends, how are you? My name is Corbin Reed and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I am bringing you a DIY fireplace build. And it is not the same as all of the ones you've already seen on YouTube. My fireplace build is very different. I have built a hearth out of marble fluted tile and I have installed in gel fireplace. So this is operated by um, canisters and this is a fireproof firebox with a mantle that I have painted and also secured to the wall using something called a French cleat. And then placed it on this marble hearth and styled up just in time for this crazy, apparently blizzard weather that is coming to Los Angeles in the next couple of days. I will definitely be here cozied up by the fire, you better believe it. And I know you can hear that really lovely crackling effect coming from behind me. So, so this is part of a larger series that I'm doing here in my living room. This week I'm just showing you how I built this hearth and put together the entire fireplace to make it look built in, but it is actually completely easy to remove if I ever want to take it and put it in another home. And then I show you how I'm going to style up this mantle in this video as well after I'm done building it. And then you have to come back next week for part two. I will be showing you how I do a massive makeover here in my living room. So I will not be flipping the camera around to show you how I've changed this room up, but it has changed quite a bit and definitely for the better. Please join me next week for part two of this living room makeover. If you're interested in figuring out how to make a hearth for your home um, that could either house a gel fireplace like mine or if you want to do a gas line or if you just want to get an electric fireplace then please just keep on watching so first things first i started out taping off and measuring out on the wall how i wanted the hearth to look or the sizes that i had for the fireplace and these tiles are actually tiles that i had left over from when I had the kitchen backsplash installed, so I did not have to spend any money at all on the cost of this tile. In fact, I got this entire project done for under $400. So it was a very affordable project. However, I did already have this material and this material is expensive material, of course, because it's marble. So I'm just laying it out to see how large I want the hearth. And then I was gonna go from there in terms of, you know, figuring out if I had enough tile to complete the project. This is what I landed on. I had enough tile and I laid it all out and I knew that I was going to be good to go to go and build the frame, the wood frame, to lay this tile over. I'm out of my garage and I have the beatings of a face frame that I'm making for the hearth of the fireplace. So I just picked up some two by fours at the hardware store and I picked up a um, pocket hole jig. I've never used one before, never used this, but I've watched a bunch of videos and I feel like I'm gonna be able to figure it out. Um, you basically just like set the jig to the width, um, width of your board and then you set the drill bit to the they're like built-in notches and you set it to the width as well. So when you drill in, it only goes down far enough to make the pocket hole. So that's the gist. I'll show you guys, but this real quick is the beginnings of the frame here. The first thing I did was go in and make a bunch of marks for where I needed to cut to build the frame. My plan was always to build a square, um, but then also to put some supports in the middle. So this is just me marking out and measuring where I need to cut to have the supports and the frame. And then of course I'm going in with my handy dandy miter saw to make all of the cuts. Down on the ground. Um, okay guys, so I'm back in my garage and it's just easier to work on the floor. I am making more pocket hole screws um, to make this frame so that I can start putting the plywood on top. It's taking me a little bit longer than I thought it would um, just because it's my first time and anytime you're learning something, it I just, you know, anytime you're learning something new, there's just a bit of a learning curve. So 
This is a very e pretty easy process, especially if the um, the Craig pocket hole jig, it makes it so much easier. So I'll just let you watch me do one in detail and then I'm gonna finish it up just so you can kind of see how this thing works. So this Craig jig is super handy. You just slide the wood into the jig. There is a release button and a compression handle. Um, and these are the widths of the wood that you can put inside of the jig. This, my wood actually was at the maximum, which is I believe one and a half inches thick. So I set the jig to one and a half inches and then you use the drill bit. You set it to the depth of your board. Once again, the width of your board, which for me was one and a half inches. This just ensures that the drill bit will not go all the way through and it will only go in deep enough to sh make sure that the pocket holes are the proper depth for this width of wood. And you only need two holes per joint so that's what I did here and then you press the release clamp um, to release the wood and there you have it two perfectly drilled pocket holes and then the next thing I did use was a 90 degree clamp there are all kinds of 90 degree right angle clamps this is just to ensure that the joint is perfectly 90 degrees for me because I was going to be tiling I needed to make sure that it wasn't at like 87 or 74. And because these are such big, heavy two by fours, you really do wanna make sure that you have some assistance and your, like, your hands are free to drill those screws into the holes. And you do also have to level it with some wood too, if you're doing it on the floor like me. So that was the driver. This uh, metal piece here is the driver and it's an extension for the drill that you put the screw onto so that you can get inside of the pocket hole because it goes pretty deep in there. And also you can access obviously all the way into the other board as well that you are drilling into. This is not possible to do without a driver. And luckily this Craig Jig kit came with a driver so I didn't even have to think about it. I'm just testing the joint and it was super strong and it was also a perfectly done 90 degree right angle. So here I'm just finishing up the rest of the edges for the frame and repeating the same process I just showed you all the way around on all four corners. Holy moly, y'all. The frame is done. <laughs> I had to make sure that all of the angles were like perfectly right, perfectly right angles. I just wanna make sure it's straight because I'm gonna be tiling over this. And I ended up just using this protractor tool to do that and I would just sort of insert it like that and go around. Here's the frame. This is what it looks like. And yeah, now all I'm gonna do, not all, but the next step is for me to cover this in plywood to create a box. So for the plywood, I did have to use a circular saw, which I was very nervous about because there's, it's just a little bit more freehand and it was my first time. And you guys, it was honestly really easy. You don't have to be afraid of saws. You obviously need to read the directions. I watched so many videos, but you just wanna make sure that whatever you're cutting is clamped securely to the surface and that you obviously keep your hands on the handles 
and that you aren't moving too quickly so that there's no kickback. That can be kind of scary. But other than that, the circular saw is a Ryobi circular saw and it got the job done so well. I had to cut several pieces of plywood to place on top of this frame to create the box. And I got it all done in such a short amount of time. I believe this one was like $70 from Home Depot. I will of course link all the power tools you see in this video below. And then I'm just taking this plywood to test to make sure that it fits out on the box and it was a absolutely perfect fit if I do say so myself. So after I had all the pieces cut, I went in with some wood, wood screws. I believe I used an inch long wood screw and I just made sure they were flush and level and I screwed the plywood pieces into the frame to create a perfectly smooth flat surface for me to work on when it came time for me to tile this. I have the framing here. I had already taped it out and uh, the fireplace will be going on top of this platform. So my next step is to, it looks really good by the way, it's really flush. Um, I have to figure out how to get this into the wall, uh, into the stud. So I have to remove the baseboard first. So in order to remove the baseboard, I used another power tool for the first time, which was an oscillating tool. It's a multi-tool, it comes with a bunch of different attachments. There are a couple different like saw pieces, I guess you would say. Um, and then there are a bunch of pieces of sandpaper and this really got the job done. Like it cuts through, I believe, plastic and wood and that's it. Um, but you just kind of stab it into the wall and when you feel the drywall that's when you know it's time to stop and then I just took these little trim wrenches and hammered it in behind the caulk I didn't even have to cut the caulk line or anything and it just slowly tap tap tapped away and it came off pretty easily and quickly <laughs> baseboards as I said before it was time for me to drill this into the studs on the wall which I just used a stud finder to find I ended up finding I believe two studs which was more than enough I have secured this into the studs on the wall so it's good enough and I am going to add the plywood on top now that it's secured all looks it looks really beautiful I love it how gorgeous but yeah this is it guys okay so now I'm just gonna use some wood screws to secure this to the top of the frame
So I'm just coming back in with the tile to make sure, double, double, triple check that the layout that I tested before I'd made the frame matched up. And luckily it really, really did y'all. Well, I'm here in my kitchen with my new saw. This is my prowler saw that I got from um, Florin Decor. I've seen some YouTubers use it, like Tina Lee and McKenna. And um, it got the job done for them, so I figured maybe I'd give it a try. I've already done a test tile. It works, like it, it really works for $60 for a saw, like this thing really works. So another tool I'm using for this project that I've never used before, very proud of myself. Anyways, I'm about to cut the marble, which I am a little bit nervous about, mainly because I only, I really have like the exact amount that I need, which is scary. So if I make any mistakes, I'm kind of screwed. I gotta get this right on the first try. So I'm gonna mark the tile, bring it over here and make a cut and then we'll see how it goes. We'll go through this together. I think of all the power tools I used for the first time for this project, this is the one that I was the most nervous about using, mainly just because the material is so expensive and I had a limited, limited amount and I actually had exactly the right amount, like I said before. And if I cracked it or whatever, I would have had to try and buy more. And I wasn't even sure if they were still selling this in the store. I think he was like discontinuing it and I got a deal on it. So I was like, everything has to go perfectly. And luckily, as you will see here, it did the job very well. Yo. That is a clean cut. Wow. You guys, I am so impressed with this little $60 saw. Wow. This is incredible. Holy shit. It's like, a, it made like a perfect straight line. Like, all right, let's see how this looks over on the fireplace. This lines up nicely. Look at that. It could not be any more beautiful and straight. It's so perfect. I literally am just over the moon pleased with this. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm just so shook right now. Like it just looks so good. All right, let's keep going. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this fits. I've dry fit the fireplace tiles. Everything is cut perfectly, if I do say so myself. Also, this is my first time using this tile saw. Here's my review. Literally on the last, everything was going perfectly. On the last cut, the blade started to wobble. I had trouble like disassembling it so I could like tighten the blade. And it was just showing its price point, if that makes sense. It was, I wouldn't be in a hurry to use it for another project. Luckily, I don't foresee myself needing to tile anything anytime soon. So I'm sure it's usable and I just have to like disassemble and reassemble it so that it's everything's like clean. But so it's dry fit, which means I've laid everything exactly how it should be. So I know that it's gonna fit perfectly. Well, I don't know it's gonna fit perfectly. I have never used mortar before, but I don't know, maybe I'm being a wuss and it'll be fine. So right now I'm just gonna <laughs> use this craft paper to tape around the base of the tile. But yeah, this is the beautiful hearth uh, dry fit. 
So that's the idea of how it's going to look. So if you are like me and you have never mixed mortar before, here's a little pro tip or not pro tip, amateur tip for me watching videos and reading. So you put the water in first and you want to go one to one. So same amount of water to the same amount of um, thin set. And you want it to come out like a pancake mixture. Now I would definitely get this drill bit attachment. Otherwise, if you just get a stick, you're gonna be mixing and mixing and you're gonna get lumps in your thin set and you want this to look like pancake mixture, just smooth and even and or like peanut butter that's another good but you want to like add as you go because you don't want it to be too thick and you don't want to mix too much um you don't want this stuff to dry out it does dry out pretty decently quickly so you want to definitely move at a good pace but if you mix it in smaller batches you don't have to worry as much about it drying out because you'll use it up before it can then you need a trowel with these ridges in it and the idea is to spread it on smooth and then you go back over it with the um, edges the the side that has the divots in it I don't know the exact technical term but it just helps the tile adhere to the um, in this case I guess plywood or to the thin set and then you want to use a grouting float to push it on once it's on there so that everything is even and level and then after that you just go over it with a sponge you want to have a bucket of water nearby and ready to wipe off any thin set that squeezes through the tile and this is just to ensure that it doesn't dry on the tile because like I said the thin set can dry pretty quickly and for me luckily this was a small surface area but if you're doing a larger surface area if you're not wiping like washing it down as you go you could risk having some of that thin set dry and then having a really hard time getting it out the tile later these back pieces here these thin pieces you see me putting into I am NOT going to grout because I want to have access to the back of this hearth in the event that I ever want to take it off the wall like if we move or something and take it with me so that way I won't have to smash the tile I can just basically use like a jigsaw to get it off the wall and this is how things were looking after I was done applying all the tile with just a thin set and next up is grouting which you do have to wait about 14 hours to do. Okay, so it is the next day, and all I have to do now is grout the tile, which is another thing I've never done, but once again, I read up on it, watched some videos, and I'm just gonna give it a go. I have this pre-made grout in the color platinum. Hoping it's pretty easy. I think you just spread it on, wipe it off with some water, so that's what I'm gonna get into now really did end up being just about as easy as that. You need a grout float and you just sort of want to edge it into the cracks and then you wipe it off afterward. You just kind of smear it in there and wipe it off. Um, and this was a pre-mixed grout. I do believe grouts dry faster than thin sets. So you really do kind of have to work quickly, even more quickly than with the thin set, but that's basically it. You just shove it in the cracks and wipe it off. And this is the best part, cleaning up to make it pretty. Fireplace surround is all done. I've covered it with like craft paper because I'm going to paint it. This I got off of Facebook Marketplace actually and it is discontinued online. It was originally sold at Walmart and like Target and I think a couple other places but it's straight up like sold out everywhere and discontinued. The company now is only selling their electric fireboxes which I wanted a real flame fireplace so I was really lucky to find this on Facebook Marketplace in such excellent condition and essentially it's just a, a fireplace around that's made out of wood and then they insert the fireproof firebox in there and then there are it comes with ceramic log like a ceramic log piece that goes in the front there are also like steel fireproofs 
I guess you could say like holes where you put the canisters that are safe to burn indoors. I got mine from a company called Terraflame, which I'll link down below. They're really like highly regarded in um, the gel fuel fireplace space. And you can buy a pack of 24 or 12, or I think like, I think as low as four, but this takes three at a time. So I got a pack of 24 and I just have it on a subscription. It's really cool because the gel like crackles and it sounds like a real fireplace and gives off a really nice amount of heat as well. And it's completely safe to use indoors, clean burning fuel. Check them out, Terraflame. I would say if I can find any fireboxes like this that are similar, I will link them. Otherwise you could follow these exact same steps that I have taken in building the, the hearth, the marble hearth with any kind of tile and then you can get any kind of freestanding fireplace that you want if you want to do electric that's will look just as good um, i just am very picky and wanted real flame so right now i'm going to wipe this down with crud cutter and then i am going to go in with my trusty handy dandy zinzer you can't even see the label anymore but it is a it is a primer that is just to make sure that the paint doesn't chip. Um, this came with like a very cheap sort of, you know, factory uh, colored paint. And I really like the snowbound color. If you guys have seen my board and batten wallpaper bathroom makeover video, you'll have seen me use it there. It's like a really beautiful gray putty color. And I think it's going to go really nicely with this gray marble tile, gray vein marble tile. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna paint it that color and I think it'll also just like pop nicely against the white wall and just sort of meld everything together. So enough talking, let's get to work. In case you're not familiar, Crud Cutter is just a um, like professional grade degreaser that is complete, I believe completely non-toxic and it just helps to take off any crud basically that might be on cabinets or woodwork that you're going to be painting and in this case, since this is pre-owned and not brand new out of the box, I wanted to make sure I got any sort of like grease that might be lingering that might mess with the primer or the paint sticking to the surface. And I just went with an angled brush and got to town painting. It did not take very long. I did a coat of the primer and then two coats of the paint. As you can see, a little bit of paint went a long way. I did attach it to the wall with a French cleat to make sure that it is secure, but there is a gap that I need to close to make it look more built in. Okay, so as you can see, the color on the fireplace has turned out beautifully. It's this same grayish putty color that I used on my board and batten in my bathroom downstairs. If you have not checked out that video, I will link it here, my bathroom makeover. There's this gap here, and I just want this to look as smooth and built in as possible. So I got this quarter round from Home Depot. I believe this is, this is a half an inch. And my plan is to just, I cut it down to size on both sides, and I'm just gonna put this up against the gap. I'm just gonna use what I always use, a little bit of liquid nails, a little bit of brad nail, and a little bit of caulk so that I can install it. And I'm not gonna install it like a flush in the fireplace because the great thing about this piece is I can take it with me if I ever move homes because it's not built in. And I've also built this in a way that I can get to the back of the hearth without having to smash the stone. So it's great because I could take the hearth with me too if I wanted to and just leave this wall white and plain and take it to put it in a bedroom or something. So it's really exciting that it's mobile in that way. Let's get to it. As with any trim, I just use a caulking gun and first go in with a little bit of liquid nails. Then I um, place it on the wall, hold it down for a few seconds so it can adhere and stick to the wall, which makes it easier for me to come back in with my brad nailer. In this case, I'm using one and a quarter inch nails and I just put three nails in each piece. Um, and this is just to secure it so it doesn't slide from side to side, but also to make it look seamless and like it's built in or to the wall or coming from the wall. 
um, the French cleat will make sure that it absolutely positively does not move back and forth. It is drilled into the studs. And then to um, shore up the cracks between the trim and the fireplace, I just put some caulk on here. And all these things are super easy to remove. I did not nail the trim into the fireplace. I actually nailed it into the wall. So the fireplace structure will be perfect. Um, all you would have to do is just cut down that dried um, line with of caulk with a, um, a knife. And then I'm just painting over the trim. Once it is dried, the caulk has dried, so it just looks completely seamless and built in. And this is the finished product. I'm really proud of the fact that I did this on a budget and how it looks built in and like it was always here. And it elevates the space so, so much. And now for the best part, styling. So this art piece that you see above the fireplace I actually got when we first moved in from home goods believe it or not and I actually ended up turning it vertically instead of horizontally and it fits perfectly in terms of width over the fireplace I added a aged pot from Olive Atelier and a Sanofu African stool that I got from the Long Beach Antique Market and then on the left side of the fireplace I actually got this marble pedestal at an estate sale and that pot I also got at a vintage store locally in Los Angeles and the statue is actually from Amazon which I will link below and then I just added in some birch logs that I had left over from Christmas that I got bundled at Michael's even though the birch logs are not usable in the fireplace they just add a nice ambiance to the entire look this is a candelabra that I got off of Lone Fox's website, actually. I believe it's still available, which I will link. And then these marble dishes I got at a President's Day sale from McGee & Co. I believe each one was maybe like $30. And then I just went in some, with some twisted candlesticks. And that was it for the right side of the fireplace. And then, of course, I love styling with coffee table books. This one's a good one. Um, I have it in my Amazon storefront. It's Greatest Escapes Europe. And there's some beautiful pictures of Europe in there. And then Pacific Natural at Home by Jenny Kane, which is one of my favorite books. And then topped it off with a antique key. These are the Terraflame canisters. They burn for about three hours exactly a piece. You just shake them up a little bit and then you pop the top off, obviously being careful, but it's gel so it does not splash or anything. And then you use a long lighter like you would use if you were grilling to light them and they just sort of burn really evenly and cleanly and they crackle. Um, in the next clip, I'll let you hear the sound, but this also came with a really nice steel fire screen. And here's a look back at the finished product. I love how the Jenny King book ties into the marble dishes. I love just the simple shapes, the clean lines, and the structure, the mix of vintage with new, and the mixture of wood with marble with ceramic, and of course the natural elements of the fire and the crackling fireplace. It's just so warm and so cozy. And you will see when you come back next week for part two of this living room makeover that the styling I've done here really ties in with the furniture that I've chosen for this space. I've actually just moved a couple of pieces from my house, but I've added a really beautiful vintage piece as well, of course, because that is just pivotal and elemental to my design style. And that is it for me today, you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a lot of new subscribers here, so it's lovely to I do a lot of DIYs on this channel like you've seen in this video, and I do a lot of makeovers, and I will be doing more sit down and talk with me's. I just am really in like a go phase in my house. I've actually stockpiled a lot of makeover videos and DIY videos that I just haven't had time to edit, but they are coming your way. So there will be more of that and more sit down and talk with me about like dupes and design trends and all that. 
that stuff. So please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and you're just landing on this channel. Please be sure to join me next week where I will show you part two of this living room makeover. I have completely altered the furniture setup in here and added some really beautiful, beautiful, warm new pieces. I'm talking vintage leather, I'm talking sheepskin, I'm talking wool, I'm talking aged wood, olive tree. It's all the goodness, warm, natural luxury that you could want. So be sure to join me next week so you can see the reveal of my little makeover and how I style it and how this whole thing came together just in time for a cold front. Also be sure to follow me on Instagram over at story design underscore with Corbin Reed. I'm also on TikTok at story design and also be sure to follow my Amazon storefront. A lot of the items that you see here in this video will be linked. Anything that I cannot link that is identical, I will tr always try and link a dupe or something very, very close on Amazon and it's all sort of like easily there for you. I also have an LTK um, with some fun ideas as well for home decorating and design and DIY. So I will link that as well. And yeah, you guys, thank you so, so much for being here and for watching. And if you could please comment down below, hit the like button it really helps my channel so much and I also just love hearing from you guys and interacting with you. you know it's I do a lot of work and it's fun to have a community that appreciates this journey that I'm on with like the power tools and learning like my design style so I love hearing from you guys so please be sure to comment down below and like if you liked this video and of course subscribe and I will see you in the next one